I, um, kind of again by accident, ended up looking into the workforce that's trained to provide care for people suffering from opioid use disorder. And I worked with the, uh, the late Dr. Rosenblatt, and um, he had recognized this as a problem quite a number of years ago. Um, in medical school training, he saw that students didn't want to go to rural areas because of drug-seeking behavior. And I worked with him on that study, and he unfortunately passed away from cancer, and that work morphed over to me. And now I um, have learned a ton about um, opioid use disorder. I've learned a ton about uh, medication-assisted treatment. And I feel really passionate about making sure not just rural populations, but in particular rural populations, have access to treatment. Um, if somebody uh, does have a problem with addiction, and many people do through, I will say, no fault of their own, they took a medication that was prescribed by their physician as prescribed, and they have decided that they want treatment. I think that every person that is seeking treatment should be able to get it. So we've been doing a lot of work on looking at the availability of providers across the country. Um, we, through the Rupri Center at University of Iowa, have an ongoing Federal Office of Rural Health Policy grant called Rural Health Value. So I am keenly interested in the transition for rural providers and rural communities from the world we live in that is a volume-based care and volume-based payment healthcare world to one that's different, that's value-based. And I would, I would say that if we ask almost anyone we run into and buy them a beer and ask them about healthcare, they're gonna say a couple of things. That they want it to be treated with good science. They want to be made well by the healthcare system. They want to make sure that they're safe. Next, they would probably want to be treated compassionately and respectfully and with cultural sensitivity because we enter the healthcare system at a time when we're often confused, we're frightened, we're in pain. So what better time do we need to treat each other as human beings? And lastly, none of us want to really spend our hard-earned dollars on healthcare, health insurance premiums or tax dollars that are being wasted. So we all want cost that's reasonable. Well, that's the value equation. It's clinical quality plus a good patient experience divided by the cost of care. That's value. So what we've done in the United States, however, is to pay our doctors, pay our nurses, pay our hospitals in a way that rewards volume, not value. So I've thought about this quite a bit. I've thought about it as a physician. I've thought about it as a policy researcher that when we are all heading down a certain path, volume path, and we're paid that way, and even though we know this way is a better way for us to go towards value, it's very hard to make that shift unless the payment's following us along. So I've been interested to learn how can we start altering the payment system, which will then drive different care, which will then drive value in the healthcare we provide. So that particular project is supported by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy and is helping provide TA and resources and um, learning environments for rural communities and rural providers that are already leaders in this, but to go that little bit farther from volume to value. Fascinating project that we're doing at the University of Iowa with Stratus Health as a partner. The other thing I'd like to highlight is telehealth. So I'm the deputy director of the Rural Telehealth Resource Center, Research Center, excuse me, um, based at the University of Iowa, partnership with the University of Southern Maine and University of North Carolina. Telehealth is a tool. It's a technology. It's not care itself. Care is between a clinician and a patient, or a clinician and an individual. That's where care resides, in that interface. But if we can use a tool like telehealth to stretch the resources of an individual, expand the resources of an individual, distance the, the resources of an individual, not supplant individuals, then telehealth can be a real powerful aid, and I say it as an aid, not a substitute, uh, for healthcare, especially in distant areas that might have a paucity of healthcare providers locally. So uh, our research center is studying the impacts of telehealth around quality, around cost, around satisfaction, both clinician and um, patient satisfaction, and trying to understand um, how to use this tool uh, better to serve rural people and places. So most of my work in the past 15 years is really focused on uh, the epidemiology of addiction, both alcohol and illicit drug use, and access to treatment services. 
Um, if we think about the biggest disparities uh, be between rural and urban areas in terms of health and healthcare, they really do pertain to mental health services as well as substance abuse treatment services. So these are um, problems that affect people in urban and rural areas, but in terms of trying to deliver services to um, rural America, it's really um, um, especially problematic in terms of um, trying to um, improve the accessibility and uh, quality of addiction treatment.